Life can be fast-paced, strenuous, and flat-out overwhelming. Life transitions and taboo topics can make it hard to catch your breath. Welcome to Breathe, a podcast that enables you to slow down, get your bearings, and engage in real conversations where no topic is off limits. Breathe is presented by Breath of Life, hosted by David Person and speaker director, Pastor Deblier Snell. Welcome to Breathe. I'm David Person, and of course, seated across from me is the GQ pastor, <laughs> Pastor Deblier Snell. How you doing? Hey, I'm good, my brother. I'm, I'm glad right. to be back here on another marvelous Monday. Yes, marvelous, so marvelous, right. marvelous. Yes, right. <laughs> good to see you, and yes, uh, and I do covet that suit. You yeah, have yeah. to pray for me. <laughs> I'm going to pray, pray for, for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. breaking the commandment yeah. even yeah. as we speak. Well, we're not always this, this formal here on right. Mondays, yeah. but I yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, had yeah. some business that uh, required me to dress up just a little bit. That's right. That's and, right. Uh, so I was like, well, let me just roll on with the fellas in come here. On, come on, come on, come on. I like that. Come I on, like that. Show, show flex. <laughs> you just flexing. That's all you yeah. do. You flex. That's and it, of course, man. Pastor Kirk Nugent is here. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, and I'm excited to be here. This is it's another month. It's another Monday. Another yeah. another bre- breathe fam uh, mm-hmm. session. We, we're excited about this, so we're going to dive in. Yeah, and we get we get good feedback on this podcast, yes. and I'm really yes really glad that we do, and yeah. glad that you're you know you're liking and and being blessed by what we're doing. Absolutely, um, I think people like it too when we get into yeah. current events. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yep. absolutely. We're going to be very current, very today. current today. <laughs> yeah. Very current today. Oh yes, we're going to join all the water cooler <laughs> break room. Yes, indeed. Basketball yes, locker indeed. room. Yes, yes. indeed. Uh, yes. Conversation. We we're going to join right into it today. Yes, indeed. Right. Cubicle. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's all yeah. All and, the conversations. And all I need to do. To hip y'all to what we about to do, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say one word. Yeah, Diddy. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Bam. Bam. Diddy. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diddy. I just saw a spike in the internet. <laughs> that's, that's really, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> it. Diddy. Did he do it or did he not? <laughs> yeah. Did he do it or did he not? <laughs> Diddy. Uh, so Diddy. of course Diddy. you're talking about Sean Puffs. He well, he's been known by a lot of names. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Combs, I think, is his legal name. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And he currently goes by Diddy. He is facing. Uh, a multiple allegations, yeah. very serious, very allegations. serious, very yeah. serious, yeah, very related serious. to uh, sex trafficking <laughs> and yeah. and other things, sexual assault, sexual assault, yeah. and he is, uh, of course, for those of you who don't know who we're talking mm-hmm. about, which you know would be shocking, but anyway. Uh, uh, Combs is a uh, um, is a longtime music mogul, mm-hmm. yeah. fashion uh, mogul, fashion mm-hmm. mogul, yeah, yeah. entrepreneur, mm-hmm. owns a liquor company. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. uh, but really got his start in hip hop. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. correct, and has expanded from there. Um, not really so much as a rapper, but mm-hmm. more even though he does rap, yeah, yeah. yeah. But more as a uh, as a uh, I guess I'll say as a. Uh, what I would call an impresario, somebody mm-hmm. who sure, yeah. cultivates talent yeah. mm-hmm. and creates yep. projects. Had a label, yep. all that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that's just to get some of you up producer, to speed. manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Producer got a lot manager. of lot of tremendous business interests yeah. uh, mm-hmm. from designing of clothes, like mm-hmm. you said, liquor, mm-hmm. uh, a, a very broad entertainment brand. Very, yeah, yeah. 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 So. But anyway, uh, that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're we just want to give you a little bit of yeah, history, a sure little bit of runway, yeah, to understand know yeah. who he is mm-hmm. but um but so he's facing these allegations it raises a lot of questions and um and concerns especially uh about the uh the sex trafficking no, sexual ve- assault. very concerned mm-hmm. and um and i guess the first question pastor snell we want to tackle is um let's confront this idea that we know people mm-hmm. Just because we see them on TV, yeah, or we see them in movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's something I think it's a trap we fall into, it isn't is. it? And I, we fall into it with tremendous repetition. Yeah, yeah, over and, and over. Um, and one of the things I've tried to make an edit in my mind, and and sometimes even in my conversation, I try to do this. And this is actually one of the conversations I have with the kids mm. is I, I I try to make this distinction sometimes depending on who I'm dealing with. But I've tried to make the edit in my mind to say I, I'm no longer a fan mm. of any person. And what I mean when I say that, you know, especially someone that is in the celebrity world, right. I, I think I can say I'm a fan of their talent mm. or what they produce. Right, right. Or I may share certain world views in terms of what is expressed publicly. 
But I think in terms of saying, man, I am a fan of that person. Like I'm kind of withdrawing from that a little bit because at the end of the day, you know, we don't really know anybody based upon their public persona. Mm. I mean, especially when you talk about an actor, <laughs> Mm-hmm. They're actors. They're actors. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're actors. Yeah, they're always in a dramatic space, yeah. kind of playing a a role. Mm-hmm. And so I just think that you know we we kind of find ourselves even when these things begin to emerge. And let me be clear, you know I do believe in due process mm-hmm. and being innocent to your proven guilty. But see, when you when we invest emotionally in the way that we we do, even when clear evidence starts to be revealed that says this person is not in living who they project to be, you you walk around with this internal conflict. Mercy. Like, man, because you, you just don't want it to be true. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, I do think that I'm kind of starting to make that edit in my head to say, well, no, I, man, I, man, I, I love that athlete's talent, the yeah. way they perform. I have respect for their work ethic, right. you know, right. the, the, the acting or the skill or even the political – public stand that has been taken. I can I can roll with that. But at the end of the day, I just think it's it's based on the fundamental understanding that I, I just you don't know yeah. anybody just because of their public persona. It's so true. Mm-hmm. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah. yeah even in um you know, even in content creation, there there are people that you feel like you get to know because mm-hmm. you, maybe you're a subscriber, maybe you're a follower, maybe you yeah. consume their content on a regular basis, sometimes two, three, four, five, you know, times a week, maybe an hour mm-hmm. at, at some mm-hmm. sittings. And I mean, there are people who watch the Breathe podcast yeah. and, and and will and will develop an affinity and, sure. and awareness and uh, a familiarity with the three of us, but it does not mean you know yeah. the person sure. uh, to the extent that mm-hmm. as something comes out, you are not shocked or surprised. Surprised. Yeah, uh, right. the, the, the truth of the matter is, uh, man, so John Diddy Combs is somebody that uh, spanned my entire yep. you know, generation. Yep. You know, we, we my all, young adult life. Young adult yeah. life. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, yeah. We're from Notorious B.I.G. From, mm-hmm. from that time till now. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, but, you know, did we have any idea that any of these types of things could be happening? I don't mm-hmm. want to say could because, again, we're, we're waiting to hear whether he's been proven guilty or not. But then again, there are videos <clears throat> that are out there as well. So, you know, <laughs> there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's a lot that goes on there. But it, it, is, it is amazing to think through where we are with this person as it, as, in, as it relates to what we can say about what they would do and would not do in, in certain situations. Yeah. And when you don't have that personal connection... You do have to make that edit that, yeah. that Pastor Snell is talking about. But so, but I think the other thing is just the only thing the only thing I think that is more blinding mm, mm. than like just physical beauty. There's something blinding about talent, mm. the ability to perform, uh, to be persuasive before screen or with script or in an athletic arena. Mm. I mean, it, it it just has this intoxicating effect. And it's funny because, or even celebrity or just having money, it's amazing how, you know, we attach credibility to people just based solely on the fact that they are wealthy. Wow. Like if you are wealthy, people like, so there'll be times where they will consult people on the economy Mm. uh, (laughs) just because they're personally wealthy. And I'm just like, the science of running a national economy that doesn't correlate with running a personal, personal business mercy. Right, right. well. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And, uh, you know, I think about uh, <clears throat> recently, um, you know, Vice President Harris, she received the political endorsement of uh, the pop star, oh, T- Taylor, yeah, Taylor Swift. Swift. Yeah. Yeah. And it was kind of like a big deal. For some, yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. why? <laughs> I'm cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad she did. But yeah, I mean, yeah. why would I care? Right, <laughs> you know what right, I'm saying? Right. But, uh, why, is that, why is that even a 20 year old pop star? Her political views. I'm not. Gonna, I don't know that I'm going to let that influence mine. Right, right. You know. So, but I just think that it just shows, though, in the world of celebrity, mm, talent good. reigns, productivity yeah. reigns, wealth reigns, and it just has this way of kind of really blinding us to certain things that maybe when we look back on it, mm. you're like, oh, maybe I, we should have seen that coming. Mm. But man, talent is a powerful thing. Wow. It is, it is. So there is, <clears throat> and um, Pastor Nugent alluded to this, there is a video. Mercy. Mm-hmm. A very damning video. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very, very of, much so. um, Of uh, Sean Combs brutally beating yeah. a woman mm-hmm. yeah. in a hotel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Um, for a lot of people, that is evidence that the allegations that have been made mm-hmm. probably have some credibility, sure. mm-hmm. yeah. some some oh, veracity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your initial thoughts as uh, as you consider that video yeah. and the array of charges that have been presented? So. If I can set the the video aside for just a moment, okay. I think you know one of the things, and I, I guess you know it intellectually, right? But I feel like my eyes are constantly being pried open. When let's just say you look at these allegations and you maybe parallel them with like the things that came to light relative to say somebody like R. Kelly mm-hmm. or so on, so on, so forth. It's just I, I ain't gonna lie. It stuns me how many people are willing to look the other way for extended period of, periods of time yeah. for these things to reach the height of agreeing mm. that at least some of these allegations are are suggesting i mean it it's amazing to me how many people's soul have has a price tag attached Mercy. to it mm. that mm. because they are financially dependent yeah. Yeah. on this person Mercy. or they just like the social cachet of being in the inner circle of a certain person or whether it is just you know you know, you know various social pressures or maybe they actually feel afraid for their lives depending right. on what you believe right right but i just think that the thing that really stuns me is the reason these things are able to reach the level of and have that level of odiousness to it mm. is because there's just so many people that look the other way and 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 show complete indifference to suffering and injustice. You know, it, it's crazy. Yeah. I don't know if you ever watched the little thing with uh, <laughs> surviving R. Kelly. Oh yeah, and, oh yeah, oh yeah. And it's crazy because like I'm listening to all these people and they're telling these stories mm-hmm. and how this happened and that happened and how he, you know, so on and so forth. And, and they're giving these vivid, detailed accounts. And you know what I'm sitting here thinking? Mm-hmm. They should be in the cell. Right next to him, Mercy. Mm. like all these handlers and people yeah. that mm-hmm. went and got young women and knew this and knew that and 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 and, and facilitated these it. secrets. That's what it is. And, and I just think yeah. that's the one thing that that really, to me, if these things are true yeah. and they be and they're proven to be true, you, I just think that the number of people that had that that knew mm. and said nothing. Or participated in burying truth. Yeah, mm-hmm. enablers. Um, enablers. Yeah, enablers. Yeah. And, and I just, it just, in it, and so that that's, I think, my initial kind of shock is just like, wow, because you say, oh, how can this happen for so long? Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Because the only thing it takes for evil to prevail is for good men and good women, women to do nothing. To do nothing. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, what about the video you said that? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. I just think, so, you know, <laughs> So I think that I think what it does is it speaks to the character Mm -hmm. of the man. And I think that what it does is it pulls down any veneer that says, oh, he's not capable of doing this. Yeah. Because, you know, even, you know, with that, when you look at some of the other charges that flow out, they're not necessarily tied to domestic violence. But I think what it does is it gives you an insight into the type of rage, Mm -hmm. maybe entitlement. Uh, that sense of control or mm. having to have my own way, mm. and I think that's what gives you know some credibility or val- validity to some of those other claims because I think when you see a person manhandle a fleeing woman, mercy, and drag her back into a space without consent, it says that wow, you know, again without assigning guilt, but it says he's probably capable he's of a capable. lot because yeah. I mean honestly when you see that happen, in in you know because you know. Celebrities, they are very image conscious and aware. He knows, at, it, maybe he's not aware, but there's an override, but, but he knows intellectually, I'm in a hallway yeah. in a hotel. Yeah. Like this is going to be recorded, but there is such a rage and an entitlement and a sense that, man, I'm going to be able to manage the consequences of this behavior that you actually went and put that kind of behavior on tape. That's part. And I think that says a lot. That's the part. I think they're, just what he said, that... The fact that that video exists yep. is 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 a surprise to us, but not a surprise to him. him. Oh yeah, and oh, yeah. The, the fact that he d- 
did what he did knowing that that video would exist mm-hmm. and would probably surface at some point. Some point. Because yeah. it's not a today video. This mm-hmm. is a this is video happened. The like video se- was recorded. Six or seven years yeah, ago. Yeah, easily. Yeah. So to me, that that speaks volumes in terms of what is this person even capable of? And, mm-hmm. You know, so there's several things that you, you just kind of push back and say, well, all, all bets are off now. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything can be can be laid bare on the table now because w- of what we've seen. Even though I, I don't even know if that's part of the charges uh, yeah, that, sure. that, yeah. that 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 he's going to be facing. I think but, they they settled that. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. But but I think there's a uh, oh man, we, we, we may touch on some of these pieces. But you, even from the perspective of he's done some good. Now, if if we look at the track record of the man himself. Sure. Uh, from a philanthropy type standpoint, from mm. a giving standpoint, from a building the community standpoint, there are so many people who could say, "Man, if it wasn't for Diddy, you know, this, 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 this." But those are not mutual excuse exclusive yeah. to what we saw in the video and some of the charges that are now being levied against him. I think mm-hmm. those those it's 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 that uh, juxtaposition, that contradiction that a lot of people mm. are struggling with uh, as they look at uh, what is currently happening in light of what they knew or know him to be. I don't know if the uh, the charges mm. that have been brought will result in his being found innocent or guilty. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you this. That video? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. If, mm-hmm. I, if I had any respect for him as a man, yep. it's gone. It's gone. Yep. It's gone. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have zero mm. tolerance mm-hmm. in my mind. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. For a man doing to a woman mm-hmm. what I saw him do. Well, really, to anybody. anybody. Yeah. You know, yeah, honest, that's true. Because yep. you, you can't even say, mm-hmm. you know, if it were another man, Mercy. you know, uh, you can't even attribute that behavior to self defense. Sure. Correct. It went way beyond that. Way beyond that. that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so man, woman, doesn't matter. Right. Um, that was problematic. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because I do think a lot of the charges of coercion and abuse, they actually are coming from men. Um, Mm -hmm. But I do think that in our minds, when you kind of see kind of the physical imbalance, I do think it it is going to conjure a certain vitriol response because Mm -hmm. it it just it feels like an unfair uh, situation. So but no, I, I do think that there's just there's just so many layers and so many tears to it. But but I do think that at the end of the day. It, and it's funny because, you know, had he settled, if you, if, if, if what I'm reading is correct, had he settled with her, that video would have never come out. Mm. And that was, seems to have been the catalyst, from what I understand, to mm. the deeper investigation, investigation. that's kind of landed right. him where he is. So he winds up settling with her a few days after the video comes out. Yeah. But that was actually just the beginning yeah. of his sorrows it was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's, camel's back, back. Yeah. well i mean yeah it's it, it you it's like there's a little flood flashlight that's sh- shined over here and then that's what brought the big floodlight yep. and, mm-hmm. and so now people are going through with a fine tooth comb and yep. and uh, folks are coming out of the woodwork honestly yeah they are you know? they are a lot of yeah a lot of allegations um all right, let's deal with the race factor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I, 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 I wanted know. I was gonna go there earlier. And I, mm. I decided no. Let let it's, it's one of the let, let me let me pump brakes <laughs> mm-hmm. because there is this feeling, this sentiment. I think mm-hmm. in the black community mm-hmm. that yeah, um, black people. You know, whether you're talking about Combs or Cosby Come or, or R. Kelly, Kelly. Mm-hmm. you know that they are being um, unduly, perhaps scrutinized and prosecuted uh, when white people mm-hmm. seem to get away with this. Sure. Now, you know, you and I want to say, since we're going to try to be factual here, mm-hmm. right. you know, it's not true that all white people are getting away That's with this. That's the truth, right. Jeffrey Epstein, yep. he didn't get away. Didn't get away, yep. No, mm-hmm. he, did, he did die sure. yeah. in custody, mm-hmm. you know, and so you kind of wonder about, about the yeah. circumstances so, yeah. of that. Yeah. Right? That's a whole nother episode right there. <laughs> a whole yeah. nother episode. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Spacey didn't get, get away, away with yeah. it, uh, even Weinstein, though, yeah. you know, he seems to have, I think I think he's out of the country or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so, I mean, we can we can drop some other names. Woody Allen. Yeah. You mentioned Weinstein. Mm-hmm. Uh, his, his situation is still being adjudicated. It is. A, 
So, you know, whether or not he will get away with it or not remains to be seen. Yeah. Uh, but certainly he's paid some price. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? Where, how does race affect this whole conversation? So, but, you know, when you – because, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those barbershop conversations yeah. mm-hmm. about, man, you know. But the, but the one that kind of sticks in everybody's craw a little bit is probably Trump. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, that, that's that's, that's the one. That's the one. Uh, yeah. That – you can have the level of allegations or even the things that are essentially admitted on tape yeah. mm-hmm. and still become president yeah. mm-hmm. um, and have somehow the ability to exert <laughs> influence over religious entities in this country. The moral, almost uh, moral authority. The, yeah, right. right. Good night. And, uh, and yet you saw these other people be prosecuted to the level that they are. Mm-hmm. Um, so let me just say this. I think two things can be true. Mm-hmm. So let's just say if these things that are about uh, Diddy are proven to be true or the things about R. Kelly and they are prosecuted, I I think as a community, we should never lament the fact that justice is done when it is actually done. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, there are real picked people that are victimized and harmed and had trauma inflicted upon them by people of authority mm-hmm. and power mm-hmm. and wealth mm-hmm. and, you know, where justice is served. I think you have to always, you, I don't know if you have to celebrate it, but you, sh- you should acknowledge that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I do think that, you know, I think you can kind of look at it in a larger context and say, wow, man, the federal government raided that house. Yeah. And put, you know, and a, a lot of military and you know, financial resources behind this investigation and yet, you know, you look at, you know, maybe their white counterparts in some ways, mm. and it just seems like the same amount of scrutiny, intentionality, uh, the pursu- the dogged pursuit of justice, it was not as intense in certain cases as it was in these. So I just think that whenever there's a person that influx- inflicts harm upon another mm. and they're found and they justice is served, I think you have to celebrate that. Absolutely. Um, but at the same time, I think, at the end of the day, what we want justice to be is even-handed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We want it to be applied equally, regardless of race, beliefs, mm-hmm. political persuasion, mm-hmm. wealth, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's what creates a lot of that dialogue. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's it's very dangerous to say we, you know, we we we, we had this conversation here mm-hmm. uh, about O.J. Simpson and and whether yeah, or not it was it was real and yeah. did, did he do it or not. And, right. Uh, but I think that it's such a balanced approach that you've taken, Doc, where, mm-hmm. no, no, if the man, if the woman, if the person is guilty, mm-hmm. justice has been served, regardless right. of their race or ethnicity. Mm-hmm. And, and we just have to recognize that somebody was wrong mm-hmm. and there is a victim yeah. or victims. Victims, yeah. Um, and so we need to kind of divorce that conversation from the broader conversation mm-hmm. of, okay, is this, are we shining this floodlight right. equitable? Yeah. Uh, across the board, are we showing, are we doing the same diligence in these scenarios as we are in others? Right. And if we are, yeah. hooray. Yeah. Uh, and so but, and I just think the call has to be for equal prosecution there it is, of yeah. wrongdoings. Of wrongdoing. So, yeah. like, let's just say powerful white figure gets away with it. You don't balance the scales by letting powerful black figures no, no, run no, away no, with it. Right, no, right, no, right, you know what I'm saying? No, <laughs> no it's right, right. Yes, they yes, both yes. need to be <laughs> prosecuted, right, right, equally, that's so good, and right. fervently, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that the people that have been harmed yeah. right. have some sense of resolution. That's right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Speaking of powerful people, mm. one of the names <laughs> that has emerged <laughs> yeah. in this whole yeah. Yeah. Diddy controversy, yeah, T. D. Mm-hmm. Jakes. Yeah. 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 T. D. Yeah. Jakes. Mm-hmm. As pastors, <laughs> what was your reaction to hearing that T. D. Jakes may have been mm-hmm. at one of these? Uh, you know, I don't know if it was the so-called white parties yeah, yeah. or the so-called freak off, right? Right. Which, were, which is, I think, euphemistic way mm-hmm. of saying orgies. Orgies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You sure. Know. Sure. What's, uh, what, what, what was your reaction to that as pastors? So Mercy. you know, you know, so you know how it's weird. <laughs> when you see certain things hit the social hit social media, yeah. you almost <laughs> kind of take it as like this is breaking news. Yeah. So the way it was first laid out on social media as if it was a confirmed thing. 
thing. Yeah. And I was just like, I was just in stunned <laughs> disbelief, even as I'm saying, yeah. uh, you shouldn't be fans, right? Right, right, uh, But right. I was just, <laughs> I just had a hard time with that. I mean, just to his age and, yeah. you know, that stuff. Yeah, what was and, going on um, But I think the more you listen to the source mm. and them talk, actually, I stopped attaching credibility to it pretty, mm. pretty quickly. Okay. Um, just because it just seemed like, you know, she kind of picked the name and yeah. it, it just, it, it, it didn't, the dot, dots didn't connect is yeah. the best way I could say it. Yeah. Um, but I think so, but I think the larger thing that I'm, I'm trying to wrestle with mm -hmm. is like, man, why do we <laughs> attach credibility <laughs> to things so quickly? Yeah. And then too, does it say something about us mm -hmm. that it's almost like, so I think when I listened to some of the conversation around Jake's, it was like some people wanted it to be true. Mm, it's it's not like oh man, I'm I'm acknowledging evidence yeah. and truth. Yeah. But it was just like man, there are some folk mm. in and outside of the church community. It's like for the sake of just salacious tawdry <laughs> conversation. Yeah. It's like they yeah. wanted it mm. to be true. Mm. And I do think that that kind of says something about us as a larger culture, where it's kind of like, you know, you know, the Bible says to judge nothing ahead of its time. Mm. Whereas I kind of feel like, man, as soon as we let something hit social media, we are judge, judge jury, and executioner. Done. And um, we want immediate verdicts. Mm -hmm. Where when I think with these kind of matters, especially when you talk about issues of consent and so on and so forth, you're rarely going to get the answers or the truth right away. Immediate. And mm -hmm. I think that sometimes there is some wisdom and reserving judgment and probably doing a little bit more research, study, reading, as opposed to just going with the, the clickbait thing right. or whatever that headline is that's kind of designed to grab attention. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So let me let me say I think everything you said is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I do want to suggest <laughs> that the, resi the, the resignation, yeah. his resignation from mm -hmm. Potter's, Potter's House, right? House. Or he stepped down as lead pastor. Mm -hmm. His daughter is now mm -hmm. the lead pastor of Potter's House, mm -hmm. right? Is she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah, big big ceremony. Yeah. No, 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 no. Did he step down from the Potter's House? The I, I may be confused with some things. I know he turned over the the that conference that they held to her. Oh, I thought but it was I Potter's think House. He's, I think it's Potter's. But house, I think there's too. a succession plan. Yeah. But he yeah. is still the senior pastor of the Potter's is House, House, though. Okay. I, I I believe he what he the announcement was that she would be the successor right yeah uh, at okay. the Potter's but house. I don't think that's already taken I don't place. know that he's already stepped down no he has but okay it, but no, it was okay. it was it was a big yeah yeah no I, uh, I remember that yeah thing, so right. she's all, all already over that conference but I think she there's a succession plan okay. that's been announced okay but I think he un, unless I, I'm reading some things incorrectly. Well, I think he's still the the pastor. You know, fortunately, we have. Uh, but it, but it did come at yeah. a very <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but interesting, timing. very fortuitous timing. time. Huh? Timing is um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I I, I knew where, I where, know. Is, is, where David it, was going saying, with that. David, I was yeah. like, I, I could be wrong. So let's see. I'm seeing here that um, he was named in a lawsuit, or he was mm -hmm. yeah, he was mentioned in a lawsuit mm -hmm. against uh, Combs. Mm -hmm. In a lawsuit against Combs? Yeah. Okay. So that does, that doesn't necessarily say anything. Okay. What, what, uh, yeah, I mean, but but his but his name certainly popped up. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to see here. Anything's possible, man. Uh, okay. But but you know there are a lot of people that again because I guess he <laughs> frequented a portion of the party mm -hmm. uh, that that drew a lot of conclusions yeah. and attached mm -hmm. a lot of credibility to it as well. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Well, the, go ahead. The question go ahead. really sure. came down to. Even if, he, <laughs> uh, how do you even begin as a man, uh, as a as a leader of faith? Yeah. To I mean to even uh, be in a space where mm -hmm. those kinds of things are happening, and and I do believe he did come out and and didn't he categorically deny he did not as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, very, so, very so strongly, he yeah. very strongly mm -hmm. said mm -hmm. that nothing like that took place. So uh, there's. I, you're, you're absolutely correct. I think that there's a couple of different things at play. Number one, why do we believe so quickly? Right, and 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 that is that is a that's a larger issue. Yeah, I think it is because it, it creates a scenario where you, if if you don't get grab hold mm -hmm. of a situation or a yeah. scenario quick enough, right. It can be gone, and mm -hmm. even if it's not true, yeah. the damage is already it's, it's already done. done. Yeah, and. Um, 
Yeah, and, and, and the retraction and, or the correction is never, never is, is, is never as overt as the yeah. headline or the thing that causes never the, is the loud. damage. Never yeah. is loud. Yeah. So and, and, and but you know, it's funny because like I looked at, you know, some of the reaction to I guess the some pictures or videos of him being in a social space mm -hmm. with Combs and other celebrities and maybe there were some libations going on. But you know, and again, I'm not endorsing, but I do think it's those were the same allegations that were leveled against Jesus himself. Absolutely. That's a great point. Uh, in, great point. in that, yeah. you know, he was accused of hanging with tax collectors and wine, wine bibbers and yeah. like they it, they called Jesus a wine bibber. Mercy. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do think That's that like point. there's an interesting balance of all right, I I have an opportunity to be salt and, and light. light. Um and and hopefully again, I'm I'm saying hopefully there would not be a partaking and yeah. sharing in. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, God gives us these me these windows to have influence with people, mm. and it may come across in a way that the larger religious system may reject. Yeah, um, because we feel like you know certain spaces ought to be avoided altogether. Yeah, but you know those are the same allegations that were made mm. against right. Jesus Himself. And, and let me clarify, and um, and I stand corrected. Uh, you're right. There was. There's clearly. <clears throat> evidence of, um, of, when I say evidence, I mean journalistic reporting mm -hmm. that says that um, his daughter and son-in-law were installed as assistant pastors. Okay. I haven't seen anything that says he's resigned. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yet, so yeah. I stand corrected mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. All right. Uh, before we have to get out of here, there should, there's one other thing I think we should address, mm. and that is from a spiritual perspective, having digested this, chopped it up, yeah. you know, from every possible angle. What should we derive for, or extract from this spiritually? Yeah. I mean, you know, as I was thinking through it, there, there are just a couple brief things because I, I think there's still so many things that have to unfold and still have to be revealed. But I do think that it's, I guess, maybe as a word of encouragement to anybody who has been harmed or victimized by another person, mm. Because I think one of the things that God has made clear in his word is that whatever is done in the darkness, it is going to come to the light. Mm. And honestly, I feel like the truth is like that blade of grass that will grow up even through that crack in the concrete. Yeah, it will. So that like the truth, no matter what, no matter how hard you bury it and try to put it beneath the surface, like it just it has a resurrection force to it. Mercy. It's going to some way find its way to the light. And so even when you kind of look at some people that are now getting to tell their story and they may have been harmed five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, like they will some, you know, I know that you get some people that come in and they may for financial reasons or motives concoct a story. But those who may be actual victims, you know, you know, they I, I pray that people understand that God champions the cause of the innocent mm. yes. and the harmed. Yes. Now, divine justice is not always swift, mm -hmm. but divine justice is certain. certain. Mm. And, and that's why we want to just say to anybody who is just kind of the victim of any kind of inequity, like just because it hasn't happened immediately does not mean that God will not act or shine light on evil eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and then I do think that there's a powerful spiritual lesson because you got a lot of folk, I think, who are, you know, Psalm, the first division of Psalm, blessed is the man who walketh Mercy. not in, in the, the path of the ungodly or Mercy. the path of the Mercy. sinner. Mercy. Because you got a lot of folk, man, who are on pins and needles mm -hmm. simply because they chose poor company. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like, all right, man, I may be out it. But I mean, there is real life consequence to things that may come out on video <laughs> That's right. so true, because right? of it just kind of so who true. they've chosen to <laughs> yeah. share space with. Let this be a um, lesson. Because really almost be anybody lesson. who has ever shaken his hand has got in trouble right now or taking a picture. But I do think that there is something about, you know, kind of guarding your company mm -hmm. and your associations mm -hmm. very, very well. If you're a young person mm -hmm. or a young adult, mm -hmm. um, you know, you just want to manage that. Not that you are judgmental um, or too exacting yeah. toward people because yeah. everybody's flawed. But I do think that there is wisdom in not standing in the path of sinners mm. or sitting in the city of the scornful. scornful. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, make the law of the Lord your delight and you'll be like a tree planted by the, by rivers, the rivers of, of water. water. Come on, that's the word. Fruit and that is the so, word. So those are just a couple of thoughts I had was just for those who are on the wrong side of inequity. Mm. 
hold still. Don't assume that God has abandoned or forgotten because what's in the darkness will come to the light. And I, I think mm -hmm. it just, there's wisdom in choosing your company well. So if you're thinking about what Jesus did mm -hmm. and was accused of doing, so Jesus, I believe, mm -hmm. sort of piecing it all together, yeah. probably made some very conscientious choices about mm -hmm. When, when he yeah. was in certain situations when, yeah. mm -hmm. and with whom. Yeah. And there may have been times where Jesus was like, Yep, let me slip on. Yeah, time to go. I'm, I'm time yeah. for me yep. to go. Y'all yeah. can do yeah. what you yeah. gonna yeah. do, but, but I'm, I'm not going to be go. here. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I wanted to add there, and, and I hope that this may bring the plane back up into the air, but is, <laughs> is, is, is we have to be careful. Um, I, we had a conversation about this recently, and so. Uh, um, let, let's let, let's step away from Diddy for just a second. Let's say your family uh, was affected by the thief on the cross. Mm -hmm. Your family was stolen from, was murdered. Had yeah. he maybe murdered somebody in your family? Mm, yeah. Mm. And what what I'm simply saying is that person found faith mm -hmm. and forgiveness mm -hmm. and will be in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I think for many people. Yep. We do not look, we look at these situations and we condemn them to hell. Mm -hmm. Done. Yeah. yeah. There's no hope for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm not going to put a list on it. I'm just saying, I think it's, we, we all have to be careful to, to recognize that there's no levels to sin. Uh, it's sin. Yep. Period. Yeah. And if it is un unconf unconfessed, Unforgiven, if you have not taken it to the Lord, if you've not accepted the, the salvation made possible through the shedding of his uh, and sacrifice of his son, you will find yourself in a different situation. But for those that do, while they may face consequences here on earth, they can still have an opportunity at salvation. Mm -hmm. And I know for a lot of folks, that's not something they want to hear. For somebody who has wronged their family, mm -hmm. maybe you are on that list of people who were done wrong or You've been abused, or, but I just always want to hold space for both sides of that thing to be seen. Mm -hmm. Yes, for us as individuals, we want to guard the way that we walk and the, the company that we keep and the paths that we take. But in addition, be careful not to just say, oh, that person is done. There's yeah. no hope for that person anymore. Oh, yeah. That's a fair point. Yeah. And, and honestly, yeah. you, you know, depending on how he responds to this, mm -hmm. this could be very much be a saving measure mm -hmm. for him. Because when you think about the thief of the cross. Absolutely. He met Jesus incarceration. Incarceration. <laughs> uh, he met him on death row. Mercy. Or even when you think about the woman caught, caught in, in adultery. adultery. Yeah, yeah. No, do you realize, I mean, it's so funny because I talk about it, how like, man, they, you know, the best place for a sinner to be mm -hmm. was to be cast at the feet of Jesus. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that was the best place yeah. Yeah. for her to be. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and I think that if you've kind of looked again, like I said, you know, I don't share his moral values, my, but you know, I, 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 I got down to the music at a different season <laughs> in my life, right? <laughs> um, but you know, you could probably always see in him that there was a, a conflict mm. about God. And you would see how when he escaped this trial, and then he would do a gospel song, song and right. then kind of go so back true. out and back it's and so forth. True. And back. So he's lived with conflict and a tug. Mm -hmm. And and my hope is whether found innocent or guilty. Uh, and again, and I don't you know profess to know what his religious orientation or well-being is, right. but that he would be settled and anchored in something that's not money, fashion, success, acclaim. Mm -hmm. So I think what we're seeing, because even with the things, you know, even whether the crimes are true, even the behavior suggests Absolutely. that, man, even with all I have, I'm still trying to get something, something. and fill a void. Yeah. Because it's clear that money can't fill that void, success, the acclaim, the respect at, at of all, the world. At all. There is still something innate that only God can provide. That's and right. uh, and I pray that he can settle in that, in that truth Absolutely. Uh, for himself. Absolutely. I also think about, uh, going back to what Pastor Nugent said, I think about, you got Saul and you got Paul. Come yeah. on and talk mm. about it. And so, yeah. um, you know, yeah. we have to leave room for Saul to become Paul. Paul. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that can be tough. Again, yeah. Very if you, difficult. If you're sure. at the wrong end of yeah. Saul's action. That's true. You're going to want Saul to be Saul yeah. so that he can face the punishment. Face the punishment. Yeah. And you can derive some satisfaction from that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But if Saul becomes Paul, then what do you do? Yeah, yeah, no, you got to right. process yeah. that. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. You know? in, in in the same uh, conversation, 
Somebody was like, well, what, what happens when David meets Uriah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In right. He- in heaven. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, it, it, that, you know mm-hmm. this is, that's, that's hectic. Could, could be war in heaven all over again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that's a good question. But it, it's, yeah. you have to leave room. I love the way you said that, though, David. You do have to leave room for Saul to become Paul. Yeah. This is the blessing of the God we serve is that he's always leaving room yeah. for us to get to that other side. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, but I, I think the other thing is because I think what you said was like, all right, let's just say if somebody's guilty of an earthly physical crime, mm-hmm. being okay with justice being served, mm-hmm. yeah. that's not the same as me. You know, because I think what you talked about is us going past that. This is true. And making a... (laughs) This is true. Coming to a conclusion about eternal Eternal, eternal, Mm -hmm. right. That's still fluid. Mm -hmm. And depending on the decision of a a moment Mm -hmm. can Mm -hmm. be turned, regardless of what an earthly judge or jury decide, you know, in in the moment that one turns, I'm not dealing with him, but the moment of any person turns, salvation can be theirs and it is permanent and it's eternal Mm. but i think that you know those are two different courts very much Uh, so (laughs) it's so very much so if justice earthly justice is done but there is a meeting with the savior Mm -hmm. he's got a whole different (laughs) verdict right where it matters we want where it's eternal justice Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. but we also want to leave room for grace grace to affect that person's life Mm -hmm. yep no, no, and that's good news. That's good I, I news. think I think that's something that although all of us can walk away with knowing our own deepest, darkest moments and falls and secrets yeah. uh, that have not been put on social media, mm-hmm. right? that have not yeah. been on display. That's right? true. Uh, I, I, I don't have any baby oil, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> I knew I would. I knew I'd get you guys Mayday, with that one. Mayday, <laughs> Mayday, it's going, Mayday. It's going. It's going. It's going low. It's going low. But 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 I just I just feel those are that is a point where some of us can garner. Somebody saying to himself like, "Man, I, I'm in the same shape. I'm in, I'm in bad shape." But the Lord is in His mercy. In His yeah. mercy, His court is not the court of opinion. Yeah. His court is not the court of this earth. Yep. His court is governed by Him, mm-hmm. and grace is. T- totally different mm-hmm. than what we see uh, displayed or exemplified anywhere on this earth. Amen. And there's Beautiful. hope there. There's Beautiful. hope there. Good Beautiful. stuff. Absolutely. We covered a lot of things today, and uh, we hope that you have yeah. been Thanks. enlightened, that it's been thought-provoking, and also spiritually enriching. Mm-hmm. That's the bottom line for this podcast. Absolutely. I'm David Person on behalf of Pastor Debbie R. Snell, Pastor Kirk Nugent. Yes, indeed. Say God bless you. And don't forget, no matter how challenging life may be, you can always stop, pray, and breathe. Breathe is produced by David Person for Breath of Life. Executive producer is Deblier Snell. And sound engineer is Kirk Nugent. Audio episodes of Breathe can be found on Apple, Spotify, or Google podcast platforms. For video episodes and extra content, check out the Breath of Life YouTube channel. Breath of Life is faith-based content, resources, and programs from a contemporary urban perspective for those looking for hope and guidance. We believe that every breath we take is a testimony that God is consistent, that He loves us, and has a plan for our lives.